What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to do a tutorial on how to create fireworks and firework animations in Pygame. So I originally just started building this because I thought it'd be a fun little project to do a short for on the 4th of July, a YouTube short. And uh, it kind of flopped, but a couple people did comment that it'd be a fun full tutorial. And I actually thought it'd be a good lesson because this is something fun you could put on like the victory screen of a game that you're building, or it's just a lot of fun concepts on its own. It's not gonna take very long and it's a fun project that we can build together. So let's dive right into it. It's uh, about 80 lines of code, but a lot of that is gonna go really quick. All right, so go ahead and start by importing the random module and import the Pygame module. Those are the two modules we're gonna need just for um, doing the fireworks. And if you're building this on top of a, another project, like you wanna put fireworks at the end of an existing game, uh, just bear with me as this first minute or two is gonna be setting up the window. But so mine is gonna be just um, fireworks. I'm not putting it on top of another game or anything. So I'm gonna need to define my width and my height here and set up my screen from scratch. So that'll be pygame display dot set mode and then the width and then the height and then one thing i want to do because i want to have like a fade out um i want to have like a fade out effect where the fireworks dissolve uh, as the projectiles move outward is i'm going to define a surface right in the beginning as well pygame dot surface just like that um, and in here, I'm going to uh, use that width and that height again. <laughs> I keep using the caret instead of the comma. And then in here, I'm just going to add this pygame.src alpha, which is going to let me draw things onto that surface that are semi-transparent. And then just pygame.display.set caption, and I'm going to say fireworks just like that okay now a couple other administrative things you have to do in the beginning we'll define a frame rate of fps 60 and then set up a timer doing pygame.time.clock just like that that will be what runs the frame rate uh, for us okay and now we will just say run equals true and this will be our variable to just keep the project going until we want to exit and we'll say while run then we want our timer.tick at our frame rate We'll fill the screen with uh, black, screen.fill, black. You really only do fireworks at nighttime, so why not have a night uh, sky? And then let's just figure out how we can exit that game loop. So for event in pygame.event.get, if event.type is equal to uh, pygame.quit, just like that, then let's go ahead and say run equals false. And now let's say pygame pygame.display.flip just dot display dot flip and then pygame.quit okay so everything you see on the screen right now is basically just the boilerplate set up so that you can do a new pygame game um, hopefully if you didn't need this level of background and setup we went through it quick enough that I didn't lose you okay but so now we have this vertical kind of phone size screen um, that we are gonna draw our fireworks onto, okay? And so actually it's gonna be surprisingly simple, but so we need some fireworks related variables, okay? So we need a list to essentially store the information needed to define and draw our fireworks. So we'll just make it an empty list in the beginning. And then we need to have a counter going to track how long it's been since previous things happened so that we can make do things like fade out over time. So we're gonna set up a counter. Um, and then we need to track when it's time to spawn new fireworks. So we're gonna do them in like rounds, like you had a fireworks show. And so this is gonna be a Boolean. So we'll set new fireworks equal to true in the very beginning. And then this colors list, um, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm just gonna use red, white, and blue initially because I'm, you know, an American and that's the American thing to do. But uh, you can, <laughs> sorry, you can use whatever colors you want. Add as many colors of fireworks as you want to this list. Uh, actually, more colors in this list will give you an even more exciting uh, fireworks show. But so I'm gonna do in RGB values instead of typing in red like this, because like I said, I want them to be somewhat transparent later. So I'm actually gonna use those RGB values uh, instead of just the words, but Pygame does support words. Um, 
And then we need to make an, a separate list from fireworks that's going to store the projectiles because the fireworks, as you probably saw in the beginning, they sort of go up and then they explode out. And you're do, drawing two different sets of objects in there. Fireworks are moving up and flying upward and projectiles are flying outward. So we're going to do it that way. Um, and now let's go ahead and just come down into our um, while run under screen dot fill and here's where we're going to say counter plus equals one so it's basically it's just counting up um, but we're going to use that to track how long it's been since s things happened and now what we'll say is okay if I need new fireworks then what I'm going to do is say for um, basically fireworks in range however many fireworks I want each round to have okay so I'm gonna say 30 fireworks per round and then we're going to randomly generate some fireworks where we need to give them the following things so we need a starting X position Y position um, explosion height so how high on the screen do we want them to go before bursting delay before launching so this is what will make it seem like more of a volley Y speed. So all those things are uh, things we want to define. Actually, even before Y speed, we also want color. Okay, so we need to f come up with a formula to basically randomly generate a firework that gives us that stuff. And so what we'll do is we'll say to our fireworks list dot append. All right, so we're going to add. And now I'm going to put a space in here because we need to add a lot of stuff. And I don't want it to get too confusing for starting X position, I want to do random dot random integer. And I want my parameters to be anywhere from 10 pixels to width minus 10 pixels. So basically it won't be right along the edges, but it'll be um, anywhere on screen from 10 pixels to 10 pixels uh, off both edges. And then the starting Y position, I'm going to start them all at the very bottom of the screen, okay? That's where you launch fireworks from, so it doesn't make a ton of sense to randomize that, especially because then what we're going to do is we're going to randomize the height at which they explode, so they'll still have some randomness in the Y direction, and we'll make it from 10, which is very close to the top of the screen, uh, all the way to height over two. So no matter what, I want every firework to get to at least the midpoint of the screen before bursting, but they can make it all the way up to 10 pixels from the top if you want. Okay, and feel free to change any of these parameters you want. All right, now the delay before bursting, um, before launching. So this is basically something you have to decide what feels right for you. We're doing, this is going to be based on that counter. So we're doing 60 frames per second, 60 clicks per second. So I'm saying I want all of mine to launch between zero and 300, which means zero and five seconds. Okay. So that's all these numbers mean. It's 60 times five. If you don't like the spread that we get here, you can make that a bigger number. All right. But so then let's go ahead and say the next one to do is random dot choice, which is going to pick out of a list and the list that we're going to give it is colors. So it's going to pick a random color from our colors list and then random dot rand int from one to six. I'm going to make this a parameter that we add onto a minimum Y speed. So we'll have like a minimum Y speed of, I guess, five or six. So actually let's do it this way. <laughs> let's do six to 11. I had the project ready to go and I'm modifying it on the fly. But basically uh, this is going to be how fast in the vertical direction they move. And then once we've gone through our whole list for firework in range 30, and actually the general rule of thumb in Python is if you don't use the indexer variable in a for loop, you should just make it an underscore. We don't need to keep track of I. That's just the number of fireworks we want to make. So I'm just going to make that an underscore so that the real Pythonic people don't come after me. <laughs> and then at the end, we're going to set new fireworks equal to false. Okay. Um, and so basically this is how we're going to get a new volley of fireworks. Um, and so I'm going to collapse that down just so that I can keep everything pretty easy to see here. But after we've made new fireworks, we need a list of a function fireworks and projectiles 
where we draw and update the fireworks and projectiles. Okay, so I'm going to do a little hand wavy thing here and just say we're going to finish filling out the main game loop and then we're going to come back to draw fireworks and projectiles. But so we're going to pass in the current fireworks and projectiles list into draw fireworks and it could really be called like draw update fireworks something like that because it's doing both but this is fine this is a small ish project so we'll just do it that way and we'll call this draw fireworks and we're passing in firework and projectile and uh, then we are going to return firework and projectile okay so if you know when you set up a function it's define draw firework. I don't know why I'm trying to go too fast, I guess. When you're setting up a function and you know what you're passing in and you know what you're passing back, it's not a bad idea to just define that right in the beginning. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna come back to that because now I wanna say, when are we going to reset and say we need a new uh, amount of fireworks? And I'll say, okay, if the length of our fireworks list is zero and the length of our projectiles list is zero, then that means there's nothing else going on on the screen. We'll reset our counter and we'll say new fireworks is equal to true. Okay, that is really all we have to do to say once I've deployed all of the fireworks and they've done their thing on the screen, make new fireworks. This is all we have to do. Okay, so now that's really all we need down here there's some other stuff we could do later if we want we'll get to that when we talk about adding a little extra functionality but you guys have been patient <laughs> long enough let's draw something onto the screen okay it's about uh, it's going to be about 30 lines of code but it's really cool how much stuff we're going to stick in this draw fireworks um, draw fireworks function and actually just to be clear I'm going to change it to firework list and projectile list so we remember that these are lists. All right, so now the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, redefine the surface every time. And we'll talk about this at the end about how to like have tails to your fireworks if you want to keep, um, like that's somewhat realistic of how fireworks work is you can see the streaks behind them. Um, but if you want to have these uh, just little dots every time, you need to redefine the surface every time so that it erases stuff that was previously on it. And then what we'll do is we'll say for I in range length of my fireworks list, what I'm going to do is say if firework list I3 is less than the counter and firework list I2 is less than firework list I1. Okay, so I know that's using a lot of those things we defined before, but let's pull up the new fireworks just to remind everybody of what we're saying here. We are saying if the delay before launching is less than the counter and our uh, two, which is our explosion height, is less than our current y height. Okay, um, then what we'll do is we'll do pygame dot draw dot rect on the screen firework list i four, which is the color, and then uh, the coordinates of it will be firework list i zero, which is the x coordinate, and then firework list I1, which is the Y coordinate, and I'm making all of these fireworks just a rounded rectangle of size 1010, and then solid by putting a zero here, and then rounded corners by putting a three here. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, this means we have a not yet exploded firework, okay? And so this is saying, draw the rectangle on the screen, and then firework list I, yeah, <laughs> I1 minus equals, okay, so moving it upwards, um, minus equals, and then uh, firework list I4, 
five. So that is the Y speed we defined. Um, I know that we are just referencing a lot of elements inside the firework list, but this is actually so that we don't have to, uh, we, we can just really intelligently make a list of all of the fireworks we want. If we were to change this from 30 to 300, we wouldn't have to change the draw firework function at all, as long as we set this up appropriately. Okay, but so this is saying um, basically move up uh, it in the proper scenario, but then we need an L if to check L if firework list I2 is greater than or equal to firework list I1. Okay, so this check is saying if my explosion height is now greater than my current height. And remember in Pygame zero in the Y direction is at the top of the screen. So when my current height gets above that randomly selected explosion height, what I need to do is I need to record what the X start and the Y start are when it bursts, but I also need to get rid of that firework. Um, so X start is just equal to firework list I1 and Y start is equal to fire work list i1 okay x start is zero sorry now what we need is each projectile needs to start from x and y start and go outward in different directions all right and what i decided that i thought looked cool is i just made a list of all the possible directions um, sort of the eight cardinal directions, I guess you'd say, like northeast, southwest, and then northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Um, and I put those in a list here where it was like, okay, you can have one, one, you can have one, zero, you can have zero, one, and then you can have negative one, zero, and then you can have a zero, negative one, and then negative one, negative one, and then one, negative one, and negative one, comma one. Okay, so let's just make sure we're not missing anything here. Yeah, you don't want to do zero, zero, because these directions specifically are where something is going to move in the x and y direction. So you want every combination that has at least one non-zero value. So that is why you don't see zero, zero in this list. But these are the eight motions that I want a projectile to burst out from when a firework explodes. So what we'll do is we'll take that list and we'll say for J in range, length of my directions list. And this way, if you wanted to get crazy and add some like halves or one and a half or whatever you could. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to projectile list dot append, and this is going to look kind of like when we added um, when we added the fireworks. We're going to put all the information we need to de fully define a projectile in this list. So that'll be the x and y start direction, and then the directions at value j zero, which is the x direction, and I'll just multiply it times three. You could change that three if you want your projectiles to move faster or slower. I felt like three was a really kind of satisfying uh, speed. And then we'll do j1 times three, and that will move it in the y direction times three. And then firework list i4, and this is good. It's going to grab whatever color we were drawing um, whatever color we were drawing the base firework at, and it's going to draw that firework um, projectile in the same color. And then I'm gonna put a little 60 on here, and that is going to be the delay between um, when the projectile is first appears and when it fades out completely, okay? So this is how I'm going to create projectiles when it's time for uh, firework to burst. And then what we're gonna do up here is we're gonna have a list of fireworks that we need to remove. And so when a firework has bursted, once we've added all these projectiles, we can remove dot append I, okay? So this is nice. We're going to keep track on the off chance we ever have one scan where multiple fireworks need to burst at the same time. We keep track of all of them in a list here. And then once we've gone through and drawn all of the fireworks and done this process for all of them, then we'll take this remove list at the end and we will uh, actually remove the fireworks that we need to. So what we'll do 
is once this for loop finishes, so we gotta make sure we back tab to the same level as that for loop, and we are going to want to actually sort that remove list in reverse. This is going to make sure that we can iterate over top of the entire rev, uh, remove list and remove every I value without ever running into the issue where the index is out of range because these I values are the indexes of the fireworks we need to remove. But if we have like six and one of them is I equals six and we don't sort this list, you're going to get a key, uh, a key error. So what we wanna do then is say, all right, now I've sorted my list for R in remove. Let's just go ahead and go firework list dot remove. And then the only value we have to pass in is whatever the value of firework list at key R is. All right, so this is going to handle getting rid of all of the fireworks. And this is everything we need for the fireworks portion, but now we're gonna move on to the projectile code, okay? I wanna do it all in one function. That way, when we're finished with this function, we collapse it down and the whole code just looks like, all right, base setup, main game loop, not a lot going on here except generating fireworks, and then in here is all the drawing code, okay? So what we'll do is now we'll reset that remove list and we'll kind of repurpose it for projectiles. But what we'll do is we'll say for i in range, length of our projectile list. So that'll tell us every projectile we need to draw. Let's just go ahead and grab the color, which will be, um, this is going to be a little bit confusing because uh, this is why I said we need those to be defined as RGBs and not just text, because we're gonna grab each value of the color, uh, zero, one, and two, and then we are going to add an alpha value at the end. So we have, uh, R, G, and B here from the original firework, but then we're going to add a alpha value. And for the alpha value, we're going to go ahead and grab that timer. So remember, we set a 60 here, and we're going to grab the timer, which is that 60 value, and then we are going to multiply it times a value that will make it gradually fade out. So it's going to start at 60. So we'll multiply it times four, which is very nearly 100% opaque. A uh, transparency value or alpha value is zero to 255. And so this is going to be the first scan. It'll give us 240, which you're not even gonna be able to tell that's not full solid. And then we'll count down. What you'll see is we'll count down once every uh, time. Actually, that'll be, I guess, the next thing that we can do is projectile list I5 minus equals one. Okay, so every scan, we're going to take one off that counter, and this will get progressively more transparent. Okay, but before it disappears completely, we want to do uh, pi game dot draw dot circle, put it on the screen, we'll make it the color of color that we define right there. So now it'll have an alpha value. And then the coordinates for it will just be projectile list I uh, zero, and then projectile list I one. And then to make them look like smaller than the uh, original fireworks, I'll give them a radius of three. So I thought that looked pretty cool. Feel free to play with any display settings as always. Now, a couple other things we wanna do is we want to update the X and Y positions based on the speed and the direction of that, posi of that uh, particle initially. So projectile list uh, I2, and that is the, so remember we defined the X and Y current position in zero and one, but then we defined the motion of the X and Y direction using uh, two and three. So what we just did on the line above is we moved it in the X direction by its X speed. And now we're doing the same thing in the Y direction, moving it by its Y speed. Um, and then the only other thing I think uh, we need to do projectile list uh, I three plus equals 0 0.1. This is actually going to speed up the Y direction. I kind of like this because it's giving it a gravity effect. So you're gonna get these par parabolic curves um, 
to your Y projectiles. I think it looks really cool when we do it this way. That's just understand this is us giving it gravity so it doesn't just move in kind of these boring lines straight outward. Uh, okay, so that's gonna look really cool. And the next thing we have to do is we have to add if our projectile list um, I five is less than zero. So that means it's gone fully transparent. Or there's a few other situations where we might want to re remove a projectile. If width is now less than projectile list I zero um, and projectile or projectile list I zero is less than negative three, which means it'll be all the way off screen to the left. Um, or if it has gone all the way off screen to the bottom of the screen. Uh, I won't say top of the screen because it could come back down with the gravity that we defined. But this is basically saying, okay, either it's fully transparent or it's X coordinate has gone off screen left or off screen right, or it's Y coordinate has gone off screen to the bottom of the screen. Then we will remove dot append I. Okay, so um, just going to remove that index. And then what we can say here is for P in range uh, length of remove. And I'm just using P because I've used I and J already and R and I want to use P for projectile. But what we'll do is we'll say projectile list dot pop and we will just remove the first um, the first thing out of the list. So you'll see this works really well, just popping uh, the, the zeroth element or the first element out of the list for the range uh, remove. Okay, so then we'll screen.blit uh, the surface onto, so this is actually drawing the surface where we drew everything onto the screen. That's what screen.blit the surface in position zero zero is doing. And then all we have to do is boot it up. Okay, so let's take a quick look through here. Um, actually, before I do any more talking, let's just see what we've got, if we got it working or if we uh, missed something, all right? So here we go. Yeah, you'll see they're kind of moving up the screen at slightly different speeds, but then the projectiles burst outward and yeah, they, they kind of fade as they go outward. So. Um, I think that looks really cool. One thing I did want to talk about, I know I alluded to it, is um, the positioning of this redefining of your surface is actually really important. So um, putting this line here constantly refreshes the constantly refreshes the surface. <coughs> oh, excuse me constantly refreshes the surface, uh, comment it out if you want tails. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and comment it out, but copy that code and let's move that same surface equals pygame.surface code down into our just redefining new rounds of fireworks. Take a look at what this changes. Okay, so now they go up and they burst and <laughs> nothing changes. What is going on? Um, I'm not sure what fireworks versus fireworks.1. Let's see what's going on. Huh. Okay, they should have tails. What is up? Okay, so we were supposed to have tails. I'm not crazy. Um, the issue is we drew these circles onto the screen, and we need to draw them onto the surface because, remember, we very specifically want them to fade away. Uh, and I just didn't catch it when we did our first testing. But so they should pretty clearly when they burst, the projectiles should fade out. They shouldn't just hard stop um, disappear, which I guess they were doing. I just didn't notice. But so now we can make it a little clearer if we remove the surface refresh from there and we just have it down in our new round of fireworks. If we do that, what you'll see now is you get these tails and you can see them changing colors and fading out as they fan out. And that's kind of cool. Um, and you can reset it that way. Uh, one thing I said in the YouTube short that I originally did about this is you can also just never refresh it. And what you'll see is round after round of firework, you get these 
crazy images on the screen because you will just keep having more and more and more fireworks on the screen. Okay, and to show how easy, so I'm gonna put it back to uh, once per round, and to show how easy it is to uh, change the visuals on this, you can, let's add green, so R, G, B, and then let's add like a purple, which would be like R and uh, B, I think. Uh, so let's add two new colors, and let's also up our number of fireworks per round from the 30 down here. Let's make it 100, okay? So this is going to be kind of crazy, uh, but let's do it just to see how easy it is to change your fireworks now, all right? We've got 100 of these things, and they're going nuts on the screen. So obviously, that's pretty cool. Um, but again, if you prefer kind of the having it constantly refresh, you can just refresh it every time you draw the screen. And now instead of having all those tails on the screen, you'll just get them uh, dissolving. So if you prefer it that way, uh, that's super easy to do. Whatever colors you want, you can mess around with it. You could make this all, <laughs> I hit my mic. You can make this all an overlay on top of a previously existing screen. So you could make this an effect after beating a level or getting a new high score or something like that. Um, so I hope you found this tutorial enjoyable. I had meant for it to be a quicker video, but uh, I guess it got near a half hour still, but hopefully that's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. A massive thank you to everyone leaving likes and subscribing to the channel. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, of course, and see you guys next time. Good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.